Okay, Libra, here we go. It's your turn now. <laughs> Let's see what's in the cards for you. This is going to be the Zodiac um, reading for Libra for March 2022. All right, so no matter where you have Libra in your chart, whether it's your sun, whether it's your moon, whether it's your rising, regardless of where it is in your chart, this could apply to you. Keep in mind, this is a general reading. And when it comes to general readings, is that, you know, some of this may apply, all of it may apply or none at all. You know, the best thing you can do is get a personal reading. I charge $60 for personal reading. They're spiritual life coaching sessions. And it's basically divination mixed with counseling that we go through the cards, see what's in the cards with you and help you to get through this, help you to plan, help you to come with a more effective plan on how you can, you know, navigate with this thing in your life. All right. So let's go on and clear this energy, Libra. Let's go on and clear that energy and um, let's get into this reading. Because it's a possibility. This might be talking about a relationship. Don't have to be, but we will see. Let's let's see what comes out in the cards for you, Libra. But this may be talking about a relationship. Thank you, ancestors. Thank you, spirit guys. Thank you, Ego. What is the message for Libra? What do you want Libra to know? Do you want Libra to know? Uh, potential. Okay. Uh, stability, which is the strength card. Yep. Is it Libra? This is all about you getting over something. It's like, you know, Libra, sometimes y'all can have the. <sighs> sometimes you can have the. The worst time, just not deciding. And it's kind of basically what um, it's kind of basically what it is. The challenge is a wish. Oh, and that's basically what it is. It's like you're not you're not realizing that, you know, like, hey, this is it's time for us to move on. It's, it's time for us to pack our bags and move on. Let me. um. Okay. <laughs> all right. So let's see. So like I said, Libra, I think that is it's all about a, a breakup. So let's see what the weeks are looking like now. I'm going to go over all of this as soon as I get all the cards on the board. We already got what everything is going to be about. Now we're just breaking down the weeks of what the weeks are going to look like. Mm-mm-mm-mm. mm mm mm, -mm. mm, -mm, -mm, -mm. Luck is on your side. Because this is, to me, this is all about moving on. <laughs> yep. Moving on. Card at the bottom of the deck. Yep. King of the ocean. Order. All right. Here we go, Um, Libra. Let's see. I don't even really have to clarify these. The message is very simple, easy and simple. You know, um, you have the three of swords with the magician and it talks about heartache. And the magician talks about manifestation, but it's something else about the magician that I really want to clarify with this. So this is saying that your overall energy is what every, every card on this board is going to connect back to the overall energy. And your overall energy is telling you that you're going through heartbreak. And with the magician being in the upright, the one thing about the magician, the magician remind you that you have everything that you need in your disposal. And so if you look at the magician card, you have the swords, you have the wands, you have the cups, you have the pinnacles. And so it's basically saying you have the sword, which is the mind. You have the baton, which is spirituality. You have the pinnacle, which is money. And you have the cup, which is love. And so it's like you have all of this stuff. And so to me, with the combination of these two cards, it's like you have everything that you need to know that this is heartbreak. You have the visions. You have the dreams. You have the confirmation. You have the people talking. You have the people hitting you up out of the blue. So it's like whether this is talking about a relationship or a job, it's like you see it. You know that this is not good for you. You know that this is not what you want. 
And so it's like with all of this information that you got, what are you doing? It's like what you're doing is the crossing energy, which is blocking this heartbreak from coming in. You're trying to block this from coming in by keep saying, OK, seven of Pentacles, he has potential. And so I'm just going to keep focusing on his potential instead of focusing on um, us being compatible, instead of focusing on he's not giving me what it is that I need in this relationship. So instead of focusing on these things, instead of focusing on what the ancestors, spirit guides and Igun is really trying to show us, we're just going to we're just going to get them up out. We're going to get them up out of our head. We're going to remove those voices by just keep reminding ourselves, but he do have potential. And it's like, I hear you, but the one thing about keep hanging around somebody just because they got potential, you know, I can tell you even a rock has potential. A rock has the potential to be a millionaire. It doesn't be, it doesn't mean that their rock is going to be a millionaire. You know, it's like, you know how many times like a dog has the potential to be a millionaire. That doesn't mean that that dog is going to be a millionaire, you know, but it has the potential to. How many people have left all of their riches and everything to their pets? You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, um, a, a rock. What if you get a crystal that is worth over a million dollars because of its spiritual properties and what it can do? And so it's like when you think about it, everything has the potential to be whatever it is. But potential doesn't mean that you're actually going to grow to be that. And so it's the same way where if this is not talking about love and this is a job and you're like, oh, I'm just keep holding on because this job has so much potential. It's like, OK, when are they going to start showing immediately that they respect you, that they see your worth? When are they going to when are they going to stop, you know, giving you all of this chaotic energy? And it's like, yes, any job can has the potential, but it's like, how is it treating your health now? Is it a work-life balance? You know, is this job giving you enough that even if you decide to stay, that it's putting you back in a normal routine that you're eliminating some of the stressors? So after a while, we got to stop looking at just potential, potential, potential. Your challenge is the nine of cups. You keep hoping for a wish to be fulfilled when spirit is like, no, this is just not the person for you. And it's like, they're keep giving you vision, dreams, people are talking and all of this other stuff. You turn on the TV, boom, it's about a relationship ending. You know, you watch a movie, boom, it's about somebody getting caught and now they're divorced. And it's like, you're getting all of these signs, but you're still like, please bless this. Please allow a miracle to happen. Please allow me to keep my man. You know, and it's like, you at the end of the day, we have free will. You can keep whatever it is that you want. But it's like keep hoping and praying that this is going to change and keep only looking at this person potential. It's never going to change because, number one, you're keep looking at potential and that potential is used to justify behaviors. And as long as you're keep justifying all of these behaviors, this person is going to start having less and less respect for you. Because I know that I can do whatever I want without any consequences and I don't have to take on responsibility or accountability because the moment that I say, you know what, I'm mad that you went through my phone. I'm mad that you don't trust me. I'm mad at this. The first thing you're going to do, you're always going to keep running back to me because I got potential. And that's the only thing that you're measuring the success of this relationship on. Not anything stable, no stability, but you're measuring it on potential, which cannot be measured because it's like at the end of the day, potential is waiting for a fire to be started. But it's like you never know when the fire is actually going to be started. You never know what's going to motivate this person, what's going to get them to get up and move, because the crazy thing about this is that sometimes these relationships are dual lessons for you and the other person because you're learning how not to stick around with things that are toxic and that brings you down and to let go of things that's no longer serving your highest good. And then for the other person, by you leaving, that is the thing that light their fire. 
Now, all of a sudden, they like, man, a good person left my life and now it trickles and it changes. It's so so it's like for you, it's a lesson. But then for them, it's you leaving out. It's an awakening for them. And it's like that awakening can't start if you keep choosing to be disrespected, if you keep choosing to be overlooked, if you keep choosing to not say I'm worth more than this. And so it's like, you know, it's like, man, you're hindering the other person from growing by not stepping in your truth <laughs> and keep preventing this thing to happen because you keep looking at potential. <laughs> Let it go. Your crowning energy. I love the um, I love the crowning energy because the crowning energy, it breaks the tie where it's like the overall energy is trying to do one thing. But then the crossing energy is trying to do something completely different. The overall energy is saying, look, a breakup needs to happen because everything is already out in the open. Mixed with the magician, that's what it's telling me. Everything is already out in the open. One of the girls he probably messed around with, a boys he probably messed around with, has already like told you, texted you, found you on Instagram, and where it's like, to me, you got hit with everything. Like Pinnacles, you could have been looking at the bank statement and saying something is off. Why did you spend $100 at Victoria's Secrets and I didn't get a gift? You know, Batons, you're using your Instagram intuition and some is just not adding up right swords it's your logic that the logic the math is just not mathing <laughs> you know and so that's what the swords it's like the, this math is just not mathing like this is not making any sense and then you have your cups where your heart is just like I know that that energy that I had with you is being shared with someone else. And so it's like everything is out in the open. Everything is indicating that this is just not for you, but you're still holding on because of potential. And so now you're you're fighting. It, it's like ending need to happen. Nobody got potential and ending need to happen. Nobody got potential. And then your challenge is and I still want this thing to work. Lord, please bless it. Give me a wish. Fulfill, you know, give me my heart's desire. And the crowning energy is saying, okay, let's put this nonsense aside and let's have strength. It's time to, it's, it's time to give ourselves some stability. Let's have strength. Just let this thing go. Have strength in this moment. And that's exactly what this thing is telling you. You need to have strength. So no, there's not... You know, you can continue if you want, but the cards is like, eh, it's not a good idea. Let's go through the weeks. The first full week of March, you have the week of the six. It's represented by the fool, which talks about a new beginning. There is going to be a new beginning, and it looked like this new beginning is going to be something is going to happen where you're going to launch in a new direction in this relationship. The week of the 13th, you have the hangman. Because of that new beginning, I can really understand that. Then next week, you're going to be in limbo where you're going to be like, oh my gosh, what should I do? Why did I do that? Limbo to me is very dangerous for a Libra because you never like to make decisions. It's like, don't stay in limbo longer than what you have to. You know, and it's the same way with like the, the hermit card, you know, th that contemplation, meditation. You know, it's like, let's not stay in these things longer than what we have to. You know, it's like, do you really got to make a decision? You know, it's like, ain't this kind of obvious? You know, it's like, do we really need to use all of our wind energy, all of our mind to really keep contemplating? Huh, should I stay in this thing or should I not? Should I leave them or should I not? You know, it's like, do we really need to do that on this? Because, you know, majority of the time when it comes to us wind signs, because I'm a Gemini, we can make a mountain out of a mohill. And it's like, do it really need to go that far? You know, do we really need to overthink this thing like that? And so it's like, don't overthink it. You know what you need to be doing. An ending is definitely in the cards. The week of the 20th, you have the Ten of Pentacles, which is represented as luck. The Ten of Pentacles is also talking about security. And I think more than anything, that's what is representing your security. This is the week that it's time for you to just get your security back, where it goes back to the crowning energy, where it's like, get yourself stable. You know, this is the time for you to get yourself stable. So it's like, let's do this thing. You know, come out of limbo. I think that's a good transition that... 
in the beginning of the very first week, you're going to a new beginning, whether that's a breakup or just a new level in a relationship. But I think this is going to be a breakup. And then after that, you're going into limbo. So you're taking that week or whatever to just kind of sit back and heal. And in that limbo state, you're going to say, well, this wasn't for me anyways. This wasn't serving my highest good anyways. Like this person was doing some stuff and I was just too afraid to step out, basically being too afraid to make a decision. So universe made the decision for you. And then now you have it where the third week where it's like now because of all of this, get your security back. Let's get our routine back together. Like, let's go to the movies by ourselves. Let's do this. Let's do that. Get back into the routine and be happy. You know what I'm saying? Don't be, oh, I can't believe I'm I'm single again and all of this other stuff. No, be happy. Go out and enjoy yourself. Bring yourself some good security. And then finally, you have the last week, which is the week of the 27th. You have the four swords, which talks about recover. And I hope that this is what you really do, that you recover from all of this mess. So some of you have a lot of heavy stuff on your mind. And the one encouraging thing is that you will recover from this. You will get this sense of recovery, but it's going to take a lot because it's taking you to make a decision that you really kind of quite don't want to make. And so it's like whatever it may be, make the decision that you don't want to make because that's the thing that's holding you up in this process is that you really don't want to make this decision, but it's the best decision for you. The card at the bottom of the deck, which is what you don't see coming, is the king of the ocean. And the king of the ocean is represented by order. It's time for you to get your life in order. And you're going to get your life in order by making the decision you don't want to make. <laughs>